My name's Sharice, I'm 23 from Taunton in Somerset. I am an acrylic painter, but also specialise in event decor, such as UV stretch lycra for festivals, and I do a range of funky furnishings. Um, I run a page on Facebook called Trippy Creations, where I tend to get most of my commissions and requests on various pieces of artwork that are from kind of like the mythical realm. So as a whole, um, as you can see, I tend to specialise in like the weird, wonderful, the magical, and just the damn right, like, quirky. Um, I think my love for art started when I was a child because growing up I was quite lonely. I mean I've never had any siblings so um, I'd always spend time on my own drawing, coming up with different like scenarios, always like drawing worlds that didn't exist, like, I had loads of imaginary friends. I've always had like a really good imagination um, and then it wasn't until I realised I could pursue this in say like school that I'd sort of like really focused on it more and got better at painting and then I like, took it to Plymouth University where I redeveloped my love for acrylic paint and yeah. One thing I will say is it wasn't until after uni that I really found my feet with what I wanted to do. I mean naturally I'm quite like a charismatic outgoing individual that's got like, I don't know, loads of different layers to me and at, at uni I felt um, a little bit, what's the word? stuck within the modules there wasn't enough freedom for me to just be myself with the artwork that I wanted to produce um, so after uni I kind of started looking into festivals being a featured artist at like events such as elements why did the decor for them kind of got the word out a little bit more and developed my contacts so I feel like sometimes with art it's about the contacts that you do have um, as opposed to like what you know and I find that especially with the work that I'm getting into is like live painting, festival work, uh, funky furnishings. I mean, I couldn't exactly do stuff like this at university. I mean, not all my work has a huge theory or meaning behind it. And at uni, you had to write all these essays and naturally that's not what I'm about. I mean, I like to wow people with color. I'm quite um, an extravagant, in your face painter. <laughs> I think the best thing about what I do is like subtly letting people into your soul and like making them really get to know you but on a much deeper level because I mean I'm going into art therapy in the future and I think that like what, what you paint is a piece of you and I think that's just quite like sentimental for me really I mean I get attached to all my paintings I mean I put so much energy into them and I think up until the viewing point, like I've lived that story that I've only known about. I mean, and it's, it's quite personal because I can just be in a daydream or a, like a trance for so long and then I show it to the public and it's like, I don't know, I get such an amazing response. Also, another thing that's amazing is really getting your business up off the floor. Um, for a business to go anywhere, you have to kind of invest in your own money. But for me, one thing I really like to do is come up with all these like promotional funsies that I call them. And stickers is another amazing way of getting your business out there. I mean, you can go and slap these anywhere. You can give these like in the post um, with all your orders that go through. And you can go and put these little business cards in shops. So it's all the things that you're doing without actually telling the public what you're doing. And a lot of it has been the, these sorts of things, like slyly giving out these to the public, getting your name out there. And I mean, and it's also, it's just quite nice as well, wherever you go to carry these little like pouches of business cards, because a business isn't gonna go anywhere without your enthusiasm and your love for what you do. And you have to be a bit of a go-getter. You have to know how to get your word out there. You have to be, you know, you have to be really creative because uh, yeah, again, like you are in the creative industry and it's not gonna be straightforward. And if you stand out and if you have a flair and a, a natural love for what you do, people are gonna catch on to that and really buy into the business brand. And then I suppose the opposite of what's amazing and all that is what's the hardest thing. So for me, what the hardest thing is, is um, spending say hours, weeks, days on a piece and um, finally finishing it and not knowing how the public's going to react. And say you haven't had a lot of like audience interaction on a piece and nobody really seems to want to buy it because of the price. And um, yeah, so that's kind of a bit hard because at the end of the day, you want to price your work on 
on how long you spent on it and like your reputation and the mediums used and the size of it and all this and I've struggled to sell a lot of my pieces because of like the price of it but there are ways around it um, and another good way of doing that is basically just doing loads of prints so I've also made more money from prints than I have on an actual painting before so I think that's the hardest thing for me really is yeah, getting people to pay for it, but then if then again, if you can't get people to pay for your work, you can also exhibit them in cafes and again, like give out your business cards and stuff. So, and then as well, other than the whole like financing stuff of artwork, it is the stigma against it. Like people saying, um, oh, you're not gonna go very far in art or art's just for kids or like art's a dead end job or things like, oh, you can only become an art teacher or, and, People are really narrow-minded when it comes to art. I mean, I'm, I always seem to be fighting a case, like fighting, like, no, this is not this is not how it should be, you know? But I think, again, if people start seeing your enthusiasm and a love for what you do and see how your business can, like, you know, keep rising, people tend to, like, back down a little bit and they're like, oh, okay, like, maybe there is, like, a path out there. Um, it's just finding it and seeing what suits you. I mean, there's all types of artwork and... The only art that's ever appealed to me is the art that doesn't really fit in and I like to call it under art and yeah, the artwork that isn't in, say, contemporary galleries. So kind of go your own way and people do naturally tend to follow you. And last but not least, uh, who is my favourite artist? Um, that is a very good question. I have numerous artists that are my favourites, but I think there's two of them on Instagram. One's called um, Brian Scott Hampton. He is a spray artist and he just uses a lot of colour. Very extravagant, very in your face, does these huge murals. And then the acrylic painter it has to be someone called Small Moon on Instagram. You have to check her out. She is a little bit like me, but obviously has a much bigger reputation, a much huge following. She does um, quite mythical, enchanting, magical uh, paintings, these characters that she brings alive and she, she does like bags and things and she has her own website. So check her out. She uses a lot of colour, she uses sequins, she does textile, a bit of textile work. Um, really, really inspiring. And again, social media is on the rise. So if, if you are creative, set up a business page, set up an Instagram page, share it, get your friends to like, like tag, comment. Um, sad as it is like the world is becoming more digital now and it has its pros and cons but for an artist it is it is really good i wish everyone all the best with their creative endeavors all right thank you for watching